As a designer, I'm so excited about the explosion of creative tools that have come on the market recently. There's so many good tools out there for us as designers, but here's the thing, the majority of them are all the same. They have a similar approach, they have the same workflow and process, they are all just kind of the same. But there's a bunch of other tools out there that are a little bit less known, but are starting to rise in the market and they approach design and problem solving in a different way. They have different workflows, different processes. I've been digging into some of these tools and one of them that I've found I've really started to fall in love with and that is UX Pin. So in today's episode, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of UX Pin, the basic features and functionality of how this tool works, why you might wanna use it, and why I'm starting to kind of fall in love with it. Let's hit it. If you wanna find out about UX Pin, you can go over to uxpin.com. That's where we are right now. Um, and you can sign up for a free account, test it out, play with it. They have both desktop and web versions of the software, which I super love. I always think is a positive, but right off the bat, it's gonna tell us what's the big X factor of UX Pin. And that is that it's designed powered with code. And as we scroll down, you can kind of see some of the claims here. Prototypes that feel like the real thing, right? Variable states, expressions, conditional interactions, which is super cool. We're gonna talk about that later. Um, and interactions don't get easier than this. Uh, design systems at scale. So it has built-in design system functionality with component libraries, permission syncing, uh, different portals for different types of people. And we also are able to use this new merge technology to design with code components and so we can release our products faster. So once you've created a design system and a component library, we push those up for our developers. They're in native code, whether it be React or Swift or whatever. You can check out more about that there. Sign up for an account. I've already signed up, logged in, and I'm in my account workspace or my dashboard. A few things about UX Pin you're gonna notice right off the bat. I got a couple of different workspaces here on the side, um, but I'm in my main workspace right now and it consists of my projects, my design systems, and my ability to manage my team. And if I wanna create a new project, I can do that by hitting new project. Over on the right hand side, we have some basics like your account stuff, how to organize things, and then how to group projects. So now we dive right into workflow. You'll see I have two groups on my screen. I have the foodie group and I have this classic group, my classic uh, education application that I'm building right now. And you can kind of twirl these up and down, but we also have archived and ungrouped projects. So we can create new groups and then organize projects within the group if you want, or you can create a project and put sub projects inside of it. It's up to you. So you can see inside of my classic client that I have here. I have the Android and the iOS app. From here, I'm actually just gonna click on the classic iOS app. We'll open up that project workspace and here's the next thing that you see. Uh, we have all the details about our project, but we also have the ability to invite users to work on this project with me. So maybe content writers, project managers, development teams, they can jump in on this as well. We can actually set the status of where we're currently at in this project. Maybe we are at a benchmark or wireframing. We can add steps. And with each of those steps, we can say, hey, we're waiting for review or we're paused on this. Maybe we're blocked, whatever it is. But we also have project activity. Who was the last person? playing with this file, who was in here and what did they do? Let's see all that information there. Now, once we kind of drill down on the actual project itself, we can see there's the possibility of getting approvals here and comments, we can preview it or we can edit the design. I'm gonna click edit the design and that's gonna take me to the actual project. Now, when we open this up, you might say, hey, this looks really familiar. It looks like a design software. Yeah, I know it does. Now in the past, I think when UX Pin started, it was a little bit more of a wireframing prototype tool, but recently they've started to expand into making it more of a design tool, uh, like high fidelity designs, and then also now connecting everything with code. So it's kind of starting to span the gambit of what this kind of software can do, but there are some differences, okay? So once we're inside of here, let's talk about one of the major differences. You'll see I have a design here on my canvas, um, but I can't create any more artboards. So if you're used to an artboard system, uh, uh, UX pin is actually gonna be more of a pages system. So we have each of our pages here on the left-hand side representing our different screens, all right? And to, to prototype from one to another, you're gonna prototype from screen 
to screen. Now, just like the uh, just like the rest of the design softwares out there, we also have a layers panel that I can kind of drag this up so we can see it a little bit more in depth. And you can see when I drill down there, you have all your basic layers panel stuff happening, right? So we see the files, you can group things inside. I'm not gonna go into all that, it's very basic stuff. But we have our design with measurements and grids and you can do all that stuff inside of UX Pin. But we also have our toolbar down the left-hand side. We have something called Box, which is kind of like a multi-purpose kind of tool, right? Inside of it, you can declare certain functions or you can just make it a, like a rectangle if you want. You can do all sorts of stuff. Maybe we'll talk about it later with the box tool. But you have shapes, a pen tool, so you can do full on like vector kind of like design work inside of your typography. But you also have stuff like input fields, like form input fields, like input areas, text areas, checks, check boxes, radio select, multi-select, and buttons, and these are coded components basically right out of the box so as soon as you drag it there it works it functions and you can tell this interactive kind of like input what you want it to do later on we'll talk about that again images and icons this is so cool we drag an icon out it just has an icon there and you can select and change what that icon is so ux pin seems to be a tool that's built around quick prototyping and development knowing that you are designing for the digital space right so Icons are an immediate thing with selections and your ability to pull from libraries, input fields, form fields. It's very, very digitally focused, all right? You also are allowed to uh, put in clickable hotspots, drag those out, comments, and you can search all your assets. But down below, we also have this other thing called variables, which we won't talk about in this video, maybe in a late, later video, where you're able to create powerful variables which is basically the magic ticket in <laughs> to a developer which says this variable stores information any type of information and any type i anytime i call that variable i'm going to call all that information inside of the variable so very very different very very interesting all right down to the very bottom left you also have uh the pages and layers which we're in right now but also the design systems and libraries we click on that you can see we can tie ourselves into a design system now we can say what design system do we want now out of the box ux pin is going to come with bootstrap foundation ios material design maybe a user flow library but you can also set up your own design systems create them here manage them and select them here so if i click a an ios design system i'm going to get all of the colors and the typography and the image assets and icons as well as components so you need a status bar great grab your status bar bring it out there it is right everything is resizable um, and responsive so if i bring that status bar out it just it works perfectly in here but you have access to powerful design systems you can create your own you can see we've actually created our own for the classic uh project i have a button in there um, I have colors, I have all sorts of stuff. So we're able to utilize our own design system. Okay, great, awesome. Well, what else is happening here in this basic interface? Well, just like most other design softwares, we have an inspector or contextual panel on the right-hand side. Now, depending on what you click on or select, it's going to bring up different options. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see if I select text, we're gonna get obviously text options, typography options, right? Where we can see shadows, blur. You can even add in custom CSS if we want, which is really, really cool. If I select, and uh, you, you didn't know this, you probably thought this was just design stuff or like shapes and rectangles or frames or whatever, but this is actually an input field here. So if I select the input field, I'm gonna get different options for my input field, right? We get input type down here at the very bottom, right? Where we can say, hey, what's the placeholder? Is it text? Is it password? email url is it disabled currently so very contextual to the types of things you put in right i have a button here we're going to get different options for buttons as well but everything that you click on has those basic design kind of tools like alignment distribution but we also have the ability to add in interaction so if i click this button what do i want it to do okay so we open up a new kind of pop-up window we say hey on tap maybe double tap while hovering swipe what is it let's do tap we can set a series of conditions also so this is where the logic of ux pin really takes over it's not just click this 
and head out somewhere else, we can now set conditional logic. Hey, only if this happens, only if they've come from this place, only if these series of requirements have been met, we can do all of that inside here. So we can say it's content of the element, value of the variable. Remember those variables we talked about? We can start to utilize them here. We can select the variables equals you are now programming visually so as long as this variable is equal to or is greater than or contains or doesn't contain this thing then we can set certain values do certain things right change the expression change the value of the variable so maybe we want to change the the value of the button or a field of text or what's displayed. Maybe once they've logged, we can create actual logins where they need to fill out specific information, have created an account. And only after they've gone through the create account flow and actually input information, only then can they see the content that's there because it's blocked behind a paywall or a login wall, right? So you can do all of that inside of UX pin, which is like mind blowing, right? Okay, so next, after you set the conditions, we can say, hey, what do we want to happen? Do we wanna to go to a page, hide this, show, toggle? Do we wanna to scroll to set variables? Uh, we, we can open URLs, go back. We can even, we can even make an API request, right? Actually click a button, get data from a public API or personal API that you create and and do all sorts of stuff. We can change, we can animate, we can move and, and mess with opacity, size, color, rotate, set the content, right? And we can even change form elements from focus to enable, bring to front. You can do such complex things in here where in the past you might have had to like design in Figma or, or Sketch or XD or whatever. You get some auto animate, some cool stuff. But then if you really want things to interact, okay, we're gonna have to bump that over to like a principle, a protopy or something else, right? So um, the ability to do all of that complex prototyping right here inside of UX Pin is pretty insane. Now, after you've set all this stuff, you have the ability to do a few other things. We're almost done. We get to actually possibly put some documentation anywhere on our project, right? So we can uh, pinpoint, hey, let's put documentation on uh, this button, right? And we can say buttons always, you know, blah, 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 dot, 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 do something, okay? Then we can put something else, uh, uh, you know, cards, uh, only at 75% viewport height, right? Okay, so we can put that other comment there. So now we are adding documentation, design documentation here, not somewhere else, not in some third party platform. It's all in this platform, which is pretty dope. It's pretty rad, okay? We'd be done with documentation and then we can preview it. So we can either share or we can preview on a device or we can preview the prototype directly like this. So we press preview directly. Okay, it's gonna open it up. Look, when I click in here, we get actual, okay, like input fields that we can <laughs> type on and then click on buttons and things. Okay, now from the preview mode, we have a few things we can do. We can simulate, we can comment, we, our developers can see spec mode with all of those things and that they would need inside of a specification mode, right? They can see colors used and typography used. They can download components. They can get all the code. They can do all of it, but they can also see our design documentation right here. Now, UX Pin is also serving as a single source of truth. So they don't have to go into your design file or go to some third party. You actually have this really beautiful workflow that works from here into where you share it in your spec mode. The designers have everything they need, okay? If you don't want to preview this, uh, we also have a few other options, right? Where we can see a site map, like where we're currently at, okay? And then we can always move out to other pages, but we can also do some actions like edit the prototype and you know, uh, start the live presentation, go to the project. Okay, but we can also preview on a device, right? So it's gonna give us a QR code and I can actually scan right, using my UX pin mirror app, okay? All I have to do is scan the QR code, boom, it's scanned it, it's loading up my prototype right now, okay? So there it is, and right there on my device, I'm able to click in input fields, and I get native interactions inside of my input fields. That's a real prototype right there. That's stinking amazing, okay? And it happens all in one place, which is absolutely rad. Now, again, from here, you can do all sorts of stuff, but once we're done, right, we can head back to our dashboard, back to our projects. We can see that it's there. We can go back 
and manage our projects or our design systems or manage our team. Well, that's it. That's the basic features and functions of UX Pin. What do you think? Is it a tool that you might use? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want more information about UX Pin, you can check the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. And make sure you stay tuned for more UX Pin videos, which will be coming in the following weeks. I'm gonna dive into some of the more complex features, how to connect this to a code base. I'm gonna cover all of that, so stick around. I hope that you are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. Hope you're making amazing things. And I hope you're finding tools that work for you and your style and your workflow. We'll see you in the next one.